Hello, good evening, guys, and thank you very much for joining today. Just give me a moment. I'm going to share my screen with you. Thank you so much for being here today. Give me a second and I'm going to share my screen with you. Okay, so well, thank you again for being here and also my apologies for the situation that we had yesterday, right? I had an inconvenience with the equipment, but um, I'm here and we're going to try to, you know, uh, talk about the topics that we started. I think it was on uh, Wednesday, right? Some of you were asking questions about uh, topics in section three, I mean, section four and five, right? Um, as you know, if you have questions, even though we haven't, you know, um, got into that part, you can go ahead and ask them and, uh, you know, clarify those doubts. And actually that helps me, right, to have a kind of, um, a, a, I would say an introduction of the topic, right? So we can just continue with with that once we, um, you know, uh, go class by class, right? So today is February 2nd, right? So that means that we ha we're having our session number 12. Next week is going to be our last week and, and I'm sorry, right? I, I know that the regular schedule is from Monday through Thursday, but you know, due to these inconveniences that, you know, sometimes we have with the schedule since we began on a Wednesday, right? So that meant that we had still two days to cover, you know, for those classes that we didn't have. We didn't have, I'm sorry. So that's the reason why, you know, we have, <laughs> we had classes uh, on a Friday, three weeks in a row. So my apologies for that, but let's go, you know, uh, to business, right? And we're going to continue with the uh, topics. So last, uh, during the last class, we started talking a little bit about um, closes, right? And I'm going to continue with that topic because, um, we just had an introduction of it. And let me just share the manual with you. Just one moment. Oh, by the way, if you have questions about, you know, the exercises, you can let me know. We um, we did that um, during the last two classes and I bet you have already completed those exercises. Let me see. So here we go. So guys, last week we, um, I mean, um, during the last class, we gave an introduction of defining and not defining relative clauses, and we're going to, you know, kind of compare them, right, and the reasons why they are different, right? So if you see on screen, right, we have the information from the grammar focus section, and as it says there, right, a defining relative clauses, defining relative clauses, I'm sorry, are used to identify people. Right. And as you can see from there, kind of, you know, the exercises that we were working on last uh, uh, last time, a dialect coach is a language specialist. Right. She works with actors on their accents. OK. And when we just try to, you know, apply the information, you know, that we started, we come up with the following sentence, right? A dialect coach is a language specialist who or that works with actors under accents, right? So in this case, pretty much, as I was saying, right? Just think of the word defining, okay? And just try to um, relate that to definition, right? So it's kind of, you're given a definition of the, the, the person, what the person does, right? And then we have the non-defined relative clauses, right? And these ones just give further information about people in this case, right? So a location scout finds uh, finds places to shoot scenes, right? He travels all over the world. So when we um, try to join those two sentences, right? We get the following um, clause. Well, the following sentence, a location scout who finds places to shoot scenes travels all over the world, right? So uh, one of the things that we were, you know, um, failing uh, with in the platform were the commas, right? Because remember that when we have the non-defined relative clauses, 
since they just give further information about people, we place the commas, you know, um, that includes that specific clause, you know, in between. But with the other uh, type of clauses, the defining relative clauses, we do not need them, right? So that's the reason why we just um, leave it like that. There is an exercise uh, over here, right? It says, oh, but, well, by the way, just give me a second. Let me see if I can show you this through the uh, presentation. Give me a moment. One moment. I want to work with this exercise. And I'll put it here in the, in the presentation. One second. Okay, there we go. Nice stuff. So what else can we say about, you know, um, this defining and non-defining relative clauses, right? Um, one important thing, guys, is that let's put it like this. When we have defining relative clauses, the information in the clause is necessary. Okay, don't forget that. The information in the clause is necessary. Like for instance, when uh, we were just given the definition of the, I think it was the uh, dialect coach, right? The dialect coach is a language specialist who or that works with actors under accents. So in that case, that information specifically, you know, uh, where we are defining what the person do, uh, does, right, that's necessary. That's the reason why we include it. And we do not uh, add commas to, to that part, right? On the other hand, right, when we have the uh, non-defined relative clauses, that information that is between commas, well, in between commas, is not necessary, okay? So it is extra information. And that's the reason why it, they are like they are called like a non-defined relative clauses. So it is extra information that is added to the sentence, right? Like the one that we just read. A location scout who finds places to shoot scenes travels all over the world. So in that case, that particular, you know, um, piece of information is not necessary, right? It's extra. And that's the reason why I just can leave it like that or you know, put it in between commas or leave it in between commas, okay? Now, from the sentences that you have on screen, okay, let's take a look at the ones that we have on screen. Um, it says, do these sentences contain defining, that's going to be represented by letter D, or non-defining clauses that is represented by and D, right? So add commas to non-defining relative clauses and then compare with a partner. Okay, so what about the first one, guys? Can someone help me um, um, reading that sentence, please? Can someone help me with that sentence? Yes, I can. Thank you, thank you, go ahead. A tuned person is someone who is dancing for an actor during dangerous since. Okay, very good. Thank you so much. A stunned person, right? So what do you think, guys? Is this one a defining or not defining clause? What do you think? Defining or non-defining? Yes, Elu? I think that is not defining. Non-defining. Hmm. Okay. What about the rest? A special effect designer who needs advanced computer knowledge often spend millions of dollars on computer graphics. Oh, thank you so much, Elio. Uh, yeah, but uh, we're still in number one. Uh, you are saying uh, that for you it's not defining, right? But why do you think it's not defining? It's like not defining relative close. Because it is not something that it identifies uh, a specific person. 
because it is a stone. I, I, what does a stone mean? Stone person. You know, is uh, I don't know if if you have um, uh, if you have seen uh, that person uh, on on the movie, right? That kind of has well stunts is like um how can i explain it those mm -hmm. difficult scenes or dangerous scenes they have to shoot but mm -hmm. probably the actor is not you know um willing to do it or probably he's not trained to do it right so stunts come into place and they mm -hmm. shoot those scenes for that person right yeah. so uh-huh yep understood very good um, because it's uh it's not, for example, uh, when it's a, def I understood what, when it, a defining, contain defining mm -hmm. uh, sentence, if, for example, Silver Stallone is the principal star of the Rocky movie, mm -hmm. we identify the, the, uh, the Silver Stallone, but mm -hmm. uh, it, it sentence, this sentence has, mm -hmm. A stone person. A stone mm -hmm. person is, is a is every uh, is not defined person. Okay, okay. I think I'm understanding your point of view, and thank you so much for that. And and yes, probably that's some that's the reason why sometimes we get confused with the, with defining and non-defining clauses because it is kind of difficult to identify, right? If that information is extra. Or if it's not, or if that information is necessary, or if it isn't necessary, right? So, what about the rest? I would like to listen to another opinion. Thank you, Elio. Very good. And and I'm going to go back to that point. Okay. Thank you so much. Anyone else? So for Elio, it is a non-defining relative clause. What about you, uh, Jose Francisco? I can I can see you have activated your, your mic. Microphone. I think it, the first one is a defining clause. Okay, why? Why do you think it is a defining clause, Jose? Because it's describing what is a student person. Mm -hmm. I think it's the essential information that we have here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Thank you so much, guys. I just wanted to listen to different opinions, right? So one of you is saying it's a defined, I mean, a non-defined relative clause, and uh, the other one is saying that it's a defined relative clause. And actually, guys, for this one, okay, Define. it's a defined relative clause. Why? Because the information that I'm given about the person is what I'm, tr I mean, it's the information that I want to transmit, right? So a stunt person is someone who stands in for an actor during dangerous scenes, right? Like for example, Elio was asking a uh, teacher, what is, you know, who is a stunt person or what does uh, this person do, right? So in that case, it's someone who stands in for an actor during dangerous scenes. So it's a definer relative clause because I'm given that definition of the person that I'm, you know, describing as Jose was saying. Very good. Now, I'm going to go back to Elio's point, okay, in just a moment, because we're moving to the second one, and I'm going to use that uh, information as well. So, can some, well, someone um, that would like to read the second sentence, I think Elio already did, but let's just try to have more participations. I can read if you want. Okay, go ahead. A uh, special effect designer who needs advanced computer knowledge often spends millions of dollars on computer graphics. Okay, thank you very much, right? A special effects designer, very good. So what do you think, guys? Is this a defining or non-defining relative clause? And do we need commas or not? I think we need commas and it's a non-defining clause. Okay, so what is the information that we're going to leave in, in between commas? Uh, after the signer, we add comma. Okay. Uh, after knowledge, knowledge, computer knowledge. Mm -hmm. Okay, over here. Let's because see. we can read it in this way. A special effect designer often spends, and in that way, will be a, a defining clause. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, very good. In that case, so you, uh, I understand, Jose, that you're saying that this is a non-defined relative clause or defined relative clause. I'm sorry, I didn't get that part. It's non-defined clause. Non-defined relative clause. Why? Can you repeat that? Yeah, because we can uh, drop that information. Mm -hmm. We still understand what is an special level designer. Okay, very good. So, uh, very good. You're, you're saying something that is true. Okay, Jose. Um, that, as you said before, is a non defined relative clause, right? Because we can leave that information aside. We can, uh, as you said, drop it or just, um, you know, uh, put it away and we understand, you know, the sentence. Probably the last part when we say defining, right? Because actually we're not including the, the, the definition. The definition right now is between is between commas, right? Who needs advanced computer knowledge, right? Special effects designer who needs advanced computer knowledge often spend millions of dollars on computer graphics. So in this case, the main point or the main idea is that this person, the special effects designer, often spends millions of dollars on computer graphics, right? So that's the most important information. And what we have there from who needs advanced computer knowledge is the extra information that we're adding. And that's the reason why it cannot be a defined relative close, right? So very good job on that part. And as uh, Elio was saying before, right? Um, it's kind of difficult, you know, to um, to determine, let's put it like that, if that is going to be extra information or not. Now, let's compare, okay? Let's see, give me a moment. I'm going to add over here the, the, the answer, okay? This is a non-defining relative close, okay? And then we have the number, well, I'm sorry, I was about to compare them, right? So let's compare it right now. If you see the first sentence, right, the main point or what I want to say, what I want to transmit is, you know, the definition of this person, right? A stunned person is someone who stands in for an actor during dangerous scenes. Cool. Because actually that's what I want to say. So that's not ex that's not the extra information that's the information that i want to transmit right what about number two in number two as you can see we have uh two things together we have um the 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 person right this graphic i mean the special effect designers uh designer i'm sorry the type of information that this person needs okay and right how this person spends um uh, spends millions of dollars on computer graphics. So we have two things together, right? One of that pieces of info, one of the pieces of information is extra. And that's what we need to identify, right? So who needs advanced computer knowledge? I can, as Jose said, drop it and the sentence will be okay. As, and we understand it like that, right? So very good job on the first two. What about number three? Yeah, tell me. Yes, Jenny, do you have a question? I'm sorry. No, no, no. Oh, okay, sorry. So what about number three? Would you like to help me reading, uh, Jenny, or anyone else? Thank you, Claudia Marcela. Okay, a uh, stagehand is a person who moves the sets on stage in a theater production. Thank you so much, okay? So a stage hand is a person who moves the sets on stage in a theater production, theater. Excellent, very good. So what do you think, guys? Is this a defining or not defining relative clause? A defining clause because it is identifies and provides specific information about the noun stage hand. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. I think we're getting there, right? Excellent. Exactly. I mean, that's the information that I want to um, uh, transmit, right? It's not extra. Okay. That's the idea. So what about number four? Number four? Volunteer to read number four? Volunteer? No? Okay. No. 
Or is a, really? movie, a movie producer who controls the budget decide how many will be spent. Very good, right? A movie producer who controls the budget. Excellent. So what do you think, guys? Is this a defining or non-defining relative clause? What do you think? Non-defining. 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 Non Why? Because we can read it in this way. A movie producer decides how money will be spent. We don't, we can a boy who controls the project. Okay, very good. Excellent. That's the answer. Okay, that's exactly the answer that I was looking for. Let me see. Here we have two commas, right? As um, your classmate was sharing with you, right? A movie producer who controls the budget decides how money will be spent. Very good, excellent. We can see that we have uh, a piece of extra information who controls the budget. Actually, um, it is, you know, probably understood, right? And and we can assume that that's um, the movie producer, right? It's the one who in the end controls the, the money, right? The budget, et cetera. And we can drop that and read it as uh, Jose was uh, reading it. A movie producer decides how money will be spent. And with that, I'm just okay with the main idea. Okay, excellent. So guys, do we have a better idea on how relative, I mean, um, defining and non-defining relative clauses work? Or do you still have questions? Questions? No questions? Very good. Let me see if I had something here. Okay. Very good. Um, let's go ahead and try to create our own sentences, but that's going to be very, very quickly. Okay. I, I wouldn't like you to spend, you know, that much uh, time, right? But I would like to, to listen to your ideas, okay? There is a section in your manual, okay, that, uh, let me erase it, my drawings. Give me a moment. There we go. Hola, estoy teniendo problemas con mi, con mi internet. Me saca y, y me vuelve a, me bota. Mm -hmm. Oh, que lo siento, es Elio. Eh, voy a pasar quizás la lista ya, chicos, no la pasé al principio. Así que la voy a pasar rapidito por si de repente se desconectan. Eliuf, ¿verdad? Pero ahorita me escucha. Eliu. Creo que se desconectó. Bueno, vamos a pasar la lista rapidito. Here we go. Veamos Alba Dir Portal Díaz. Alba Dir Portal Díaz. Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Present teacher. Thank you. Ana Francisca García Nieto. Present teacher. Thank you so much. Carlos Antonio González Nuila. Present teacher. Thank you. Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutiérrez. Eh, Claudia Marcela Linares Urquilla. Here. Thank you. Diego Anthony Meléndez Mayen. Dina Esmeralda Ayala López. 
Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Eliu. Bueno, yo sé que ella está Eliu, entonces solo que está teniendo problemas eh, de, con el internet. Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Present teacher. Thank you, Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Present. Eh, thank you, Jenny Lisset Campos Martínez. Present teacher. Thank you, Jose Carlos Rodríguez Linares. Present teacher. Thank you, Jose Francisco Peña Peña. Present. Thank you, eh, Jose Isaías Portillo Ramos. I'm here, teacher. Thank you, Jose Jovito Torres Amaya. Present. Present teacher. Thank you, Elio. Y thank you también, José Torres. Thank you. Gracias, gracias. Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. Present, teacher. Thank you, María Lucena Ayala de Flores. Present. Thank you, Marta Estela Díaz Sánchez. Present. Thank you, Marta Ruth Enrique Reyes. Present. Thank you, Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. Present, teacher. Thank you, eh, Nady Ibis Mendez Alveño. Present, teacher. Thank you, Rafael Antonio Morales Martinez. Present. Thank you, Rebecca Stefania Pereira Flores. Present. Thank you, Rodrigo Antonio Meléndez Morales. Rodrigo Daniel Meléndez Mayen. Rosa María Milaro Pérez de Paz. Present. Thank you, Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Present. Thank you, Jensi Marlene Leon Lopez. And Sulma Beatriz Perez Galdames. Present. Thank you so much, guys. Thank Present. You. Was it Prince Jensen? Jensi, Bella. Okay, thank you. Bye. Thank you. I'm going to continue here. Give me a moment. There we go. Okay, so I would like to listen to your sentences, guys. Okay, it says complicit statements about people in your life. Okay, people in your life. So there we have the first one. My mother is a person who, right? So as you can see, um, the sentences uh, or the set, it's already telling you that you have to find in and non defined relative clauses, right? So in number two, and three and four are non-definite relative clauses. We have information, you know, in between commas, right? Or after the comma and you can include, you know, a piece of extra, you know, um, information so we can give an example of a non-definite relative clause, right? So I will give you, let's see, four minutes, okay? Four minutes, four to five minutes for you to think about different options to um, to create your sentences. I'm going to set the timer. Voy a poner aquí un, un cronómetro. Give me a moment. So we're going to give you five minutes. And those five minutes begin right now.
Just one more minute, guys, one more minute. Okay, just 10 seconds. And. Okay, very good. We have already our, we had already our five minutes. So let's go ahead and listen to the uh, examples that you created. Okay, so if you want to participate, you can raise your hand and I will listen to your um, sentences. Yes, Elliot, tell me. Yes, my mother is a person who loves me in any condition. Mm, okay, unconditionally, right? So my mother is a person mm -hmm. who loves me unconditionally because we're using, um, uh, what's the name of this? Is it a, an adverb, right? To, to tell how the person, you know, performs the action. So your mo my mother is a person who loves me unconditionally. Very good, excellent. What about uh, another example with my neighbor? Anyone else? Or Elu, if you have one? Yes, my neighbor who lives in front of my home mm -hmm. always parks his car in my designated <laughs> place. <laughs> designated, designated. Designated. Uh -huh. Place. Yes. Okay, my neighbor who lives in front of my house always park. Parks his car, parts, right? His car in my designated place. Okay, very good. What about the next one? Anyone else? Someone else? No? It says that what Claudia Marcela says in the in the chat, he said, my good friend is a doctor who has his, his own clinic. Okay, my good friend is a doctor who has his own clinic. Very good, I like it. Okay, excellent, good job. Anyone else? Remember that if you do not want to activate your mic, your mics, you can, um, or your mic in this case, you can just uh, type the sentence in the chat box. Yes, tell me. No one? Hey, yes, need to check. go ahead. My my teacher, who is the best teacher in English corporativo, is Marcela. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Extra points. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Good job, Jenny. Exactly. So my teacher, who is, right, a, a, an English corporativo, you said, right? Yes. Okay, is Marcela. Okay, very good. I like it. I love it. Okay. Then, oh. we, then we have Rosa Maria de Milaro. She says, my good friend is a person who always listens, uh, listen to me. My good friend is a person who always listen to me. Okay, or always listens, I'm sorry. Jensi, tell me. Jensi, I think you're, you're on mute. My mother is a person who likes cooking for our family, okay? My mother is a person who likes cooking for our family. Good job, Rafael. Thank you so much. Okay, teacher, mm -hmm. me? Yes. My, um, number two, mm -hmm. my neighbor who is a good person always helps others. 
Muy bien, excellent. My neighbor, who is a good person, always helps me or helps everyone. Okay, good job. Thank you so much. And what about the last one? I would like to listen to an example with the last one. My best friend. Anyone? Go ahead. My best friend is someone that never drinks a beer. Okay, my best friend is someone that never? Drink beer. Ah, never drinks, okay. My best friend is someone that never drinks beer. Okay, thank you so much. That's correct, okay. Excellent. Please. Tell me, Sulma. Oh, first Sulma, first. and then I think it's Jose, right? Okay. Okay, so Sulma. Make you okay. Ah, okay. So uh, next. <laughs> my, best friend, my best friend is someone that is always there for you. Oh, okay. Uh, well, yeah, for me or for you, right? So my best friend is someone. No, okay, that is, for me. Ah, okay, exactly. My best friend is someone that is always there for me. Okay, good <laughs> job. Excellent. Then, oh, well, Sulma has a sentence hey. here. She says, my best friend, ah, she wanted to type, okay? My best friend is someone who always advises me and, um, and I would say, and is with me unconditionally, okay? Because I already, you already use always. So my best friend is someone who always advises me and is with me unconditionally, okay? Good job, excellent. Now, guys, one more point that I would like to discuss, right, has to do with um, given recommendations and opinions, right? And we, well, some of you were asking questions about this part, right? I think there was an exercise in the platform about it. Oops, sorry. Okay, and it's important just to have a quick uh, review. I know that probably you have already studied them before, right? Because um, we studied models, right, in different units, but it's important for us to have just, to, you know, kind of a reminder on how they work, okay? Give me a moment, I will show it here. Give me a second. Okay. So given recommendations and opinions, guys. Oh, by the way, just before moving to this part, do you have any questions about the defining and not defining clauses? Do you think it's, um, you know, um, clear now? Any doubts that you would like me to clarify? No? Okay, very good. Entonces no hay, no hay preguntas que aclaro como el agua o como el horchata. <laughs> Espero que como el agua. Bye. Okay. And also I like the part uh, in the platform where you could practice because I could see that you took it seriously, right? You were trying your best to complete those um, that section, right? Where you have to organize or where you have to combine, you know, the sentences and create defining and non-defining relative clauses. So good job. Now guys, when giving recommendations and opinions, right? Um, we are going to see it in two different ways as you can see on screen. When, when you think something is a good idea and when you think something is absolutely necessary, right? So here we have two things and actually we have two different options, right? In the first one and more than two in the second option, right? So, I don't want to say we're given advice, a piece of advice, but I want to say we're given recommendations and opinions, right? Because sometimes it's not the same, you know, um, we don't want to be, whenever we don't feel, you know, 
confident enough, right, to give a piece of advice, we just try to, you know, um, give a recommendation and not to get, you know, too personal with the person, et cetera. So you just give your opinion, right? Well, hoping, you know, the other person is going to consider it. So the first, uh, I would say, way we do it is when we think something is a good idea. Okay, so for example, the first sentence, right? Cyclists should be required to wear a helmet, right? Should be required to wear a helmet. So in this case, that you think it's a good idea. In El Salvador, right, it's kind of something that is absolutely necessary because of the, um, you know, the way we drive, etc. So we're kind of intolerant whenever we're driving in El Salvador. So we need to be very careful. Then pet owners shouldn't be allowed to, to walk dogs without a leash, right? And that's also something that you consider is a good idea, right? People ought to be required to end parties at midnight, right? So the first one is should, right? Uh, for affirmative sentences, shouldn't for um, the negative sentence. And then we have ought to be required to, right? Which is another option for similar to have to, right? So should be required, shouldn't or should be allowed, right? Because actually you can uh, play with that, right? So should be required or shouldn't be required, should be allowed or shouldn't be allowed, auto be required, right? Now, in number two, right, the second way we're going to see it is whenever you think something is absolutely necessary, right? So that we have four different sentences. And let's take a look at the models, right, that we're using. And the first one says, laws must be passed to control the noise from car alarms. Now, you think it's absolutely necessary. That's something you consider, right? People mustn't be permitted to park motorcycles on the sidewalks. A rule has to be made to require cycling lanes on city streets. And something has got to be done to stop littering, right? So those are the different options that we have whenever we want to express that something is absolutely necessary. Must be passed or mustn't be passed must be permitted or mustn't be permitted, has to be made, right, or has got to be done, okay? So then there is an exercise right down there. I don't know if you had um, the chance to complete, well, let me go ahead and I'm going to show it to you right now. Not very sure if this one was included in the, um, in the platform, but let's go ahead and complete it here. Okay, there we go. This is the exercise. It says complete the sentences possibly, posit, I mean, positively or negatively, right? Choose a model that shows how strongly you feel about these issues. Remember, guys. And, and that, that is the point that I wanted to highlight. Uh, we have two situations, right? Where you think something is a good idea. Because in my case, for example, I can, I can say uh, cyclists um, must be required to wear a helmet because I think that's something absolutely necessary. So answers may vary because of that, right? Because actually you're giving your recommendations and your opinions, okay? It's not that I have the right answer. Just try to apply, you know, the right um, model, right? And just choose the model that shows how strongly you feel about these issues, okay? So let's go ahead and give you five minutes, okay, for you to complete them. And after that, we're going to check our answers. And I'm going to start the timer right now. There we go. If you have any question, let me know as well.
I'm going to share with you guys that part of the manual that, let me see, that shows the options that you have available, okay? So you can see them while you answer them. Give me a moment. It's gonna be this one. Okay, in the WhatsApp group, I shared the uh, different options that we have in case you wanted to see them. Because I know that some of you do not have, well, do not have the manual handy or haven't downloaded it. <laughs> so in case, you know, you don't have it, I shared the image through the WhatsApp group. Let me know, right, if you have questions or if you need help. Just 30 more seconds. Okay, 10 more seconds. And time's up. Okay, let me listen to your sentences, guys. Okay, if you want to participate, do not forget to, do not forget to raise your hand so we can do it in order. Uh, Liu, thank you very much. Let me listen to your sentence. The first. People mm -hmm. must not. Oh. Must not be allowed to use cell phone while driving. Or must not. Okay, very good. Um, <laughs> you sounded kind of robotic because I think your connection is not working well, but I understood. People mustn't be permitted. Is that what you said? Mustn't be permitted? Be allowed. allowed. Ah, okay. Oh, allowed. Okay. Allowed. So very good. So in your case, you said must, I mean, shouldn't be allowed. Is that the option that you picked? No, must not be allowed. Okay. Must not, mustn't be allowed. Ah, okay, I understand. So you didn't not you didn't use the options that we had in bold, right? So you 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 used another one. Mustn't uh, be allowed. Uh, oh. mm, okay. Mm -hmm. Mustn't be allowed to use the cell phones or to use cell phones while driving. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Excellent. Uh, what about number two? Any volunteer for number two? And yes, actually, I agree, right? We must not be, or mustn't, right, be permitted to use our cell phones while driving. 
because we, you know, it puts our lives at risk, right? So Claudia, Marcela, thank you very much. Number two. Young people must not be permitted to get married before age 15. Okay, excellent, right? Young people must not or mustn't be permitted, right, to get married before age 15. Definitely. At, at, age, at age 15, we are not pretty sure, right, what we want. So that it's true. What about number three, Jose? Companies have to be required to give work for student breaks. Okay, repeat it one more time. Companies? It has to be required. Okay. To give work for student breaks. Ah, okay. So you use a different option. A different option. I'm sorry. So have to, because we're talking about a plural form. So they sh they have to. They have to. Okay. Mm -hmm, be required to give workers periodic breaks. Okay. Excellent. Very good. What about number three? Number three. Volunteer for number three. No, number four. I'm sorry. Number four. Oh, Claudia Marcela gave us. Lots of options, right? I mean, all the sentences and including her opinions. Very good. What do you have in number four? Let's see. People shouldn't be allowed to have pets in high, I think it's high rise apartment. Okay, very good. Shouldn't be allowed. Yes. Actually, one of these days, I think it was two weeks ago that um, I was reading about an accident, right? And uh, this it, I think it was a dog fell from the from the third, I think, floor, and there was, you know, it was like a a chain reaction thing because um, the dog felt, you know, onto a person. The person, um, I think, stumbled upon something and was hit by a car, and then. Uh, this car was hit by another car, so it, it was like a chain of events, right? Unfortunately. What about number five? Number five? Any volunteer? No? Me? Okay, go ahead. Uh, scientists uh, shouldn't be to use animal for research. Should research. <laughs> Okay, you said sci scientists shouldn't be to use. Is that what you said? Uh, permit. Ah, okay. Okay, so in that case, um, we are included, including more, um, more than what we need, right? So you can say something like scientists, right? Shouldn't be allowed or mustn't be permitted because actually those two options we have them available uh, in the list or on the list right and you can say scientists mustn't be allowed or mustn't be permitted to use animals for research yes and that's cruel right so that's very cruel thank you so much what about number six number six Anyone? Law must yeah. law must be passed to end the sale of handle handles handles. Very good. That's correct, right? So laws must be passed, right, to ban the sale of handguns. Yes, actually, pretty pretty dangerous, right? Very good. What about number seven? Two more, two more, and we finish. Right, number seven, guys. I would like to listen to your opinion. Number seven. Well, I will read uh, Claudia Marcela's options. Let me see. The sale, right? The sale of fur products shouldn't be permitted, right? Shouldn't be permitted. Okay, good job. And then the last one, Elio, I think you raised your hand. Would you like to help me with the... Yes. Okay. Something must be done to stop cloth from staying open so late. Okay. Something must be done to stop clubs from staying open so late. Very good. Excellent, guys. Good job. 
So that was about giving recommendations and opinions, right? So my recommendation <laughs> would be to have the list handy, right? Just practice it. Remember that the idea here is to use more advanced vocabulary, right? And for you to have more options. I know that generally whenever we talk about recommendations and giving opinion, we use should, but as you can see, we can use other models, right? And those, because actually those are uh, phrases, right? That can, um, uh, that will help you, you know, to express uh, your ideas in different ways. So I'm going to pass the attendance right now, and then we're going to end the class. Just give me a moment. Let's see. Alba Dir Portal Diaz. Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Here. Thank you, Ana Francisca García Nieto. Present teacher. Thank you, Carlos Antonio González Nuila. Present teacher. Thank you, Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutierrez. Claudia Marcela Linares Urquía. Here. Thank you, thank you, Diego, Diego Anthony Melendez Mayen. Eh, Dina Esmeralda Ayala López. Present. Thank you. Eh, Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Present teacher. Thank you, Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Present teacher. Thank you, Jaime Dagoberto. Give me a second. So, es que escucho micrófonos activados. Ahí está. Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Present. Thank you, Jenny Lisset Campos Martínez. Present teacher. Thank you, Jose Carlos Rodríguez Linares. Present teacher. Thank you, Jose Francisco Peña Peña. Present. Thank you, Jose Isaias Portillo Ramos. Present teacher. Thank you. Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. Yes. Ahí está. Present teacher. Thank you, Mayra. María Azucena Ayala de Flores. Present. Thank you. Marta Estela Díaz Sánchez. Present. Thank you. Marta Ruz Enríquez Reyes. Present. Thank you. Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. Present teacher. Thank you. Nady Ibis Mendez Albeño. Present teacher. Thank you. Rafael Antonio Morales Martinez. Present. Thank you. Rebecca Estefanía Pereira Flores. Present. Thank you, Rodrigo Antonio Melendez Morales. Rodrigo Daniel Melendez Mayen. Rosa Maria del Milagro Perez de Paz. Present. Thank you, Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Present. Thank you, Jensi Marlene Leon López. Present teacher. Thank you, Enzulma Beatriz Perez Galdames. Present. Thank you. Ah, didn't, oh, I'm sorry, Jose, give me a second. Aquí está, Jose Jovito Torres Amaya. Torres. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Thank okay. you so gracias. much. Gracias, gracias. Okay. A usted, muchas gracias por recordarme. Bueno, chicos, thank you very much for joining today. I know that it was a Friday, but I promise you next week is going to be from Monday through Thursday, okay? So thank you very much for being here and have a wonderful weekend. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.